Yeah, check and see. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to speak if he's speaking. I think it's time. Everybody okay? Everybody make it out all right. So, what's the power of an evangel preaching in Latin? Historically, I don't study French preaching. Okay. So well, I, I'll get started. Is it okay with y'all? <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. There you go. It's all good. All good. Uh, <clears throat> so as you can imagine, everybody in politics and at the federal level was asked a lot of questions by people in the media. What was yesterday like? What does it all mean? Uh, rather than doing a bunch of interviews, I thought I'd give a my view of what happened yesterday and the way forward for the country uh, and uh, try to get back to South Carolina and and help the transition here. Uh, the first thing that stands out to me is how embarrassed and disgusted I am that the United States Capitol could be taken over by domestic terrorists while we're in session, transferring power from one president to the other, that a band of people who are terrorists, not patriots, literally occupied the floor of the House, drove the Senate out of its chamber, and the question for the country is, how could that happen 20 years after 9-11? September this year will be the 20th anniversary of the attack on our nation. It is mind-boggling that such an event could occur. Uh, Senator Schumer's call for the Secretary, Sergeant of Arms of the Senate to resign, I echo that. Anyone in charge of defending the Capitol Anyone in charge of defending the Capitol failed uh, in their duties. If they would have been in the military, they would have been relieved of their commands and most likely court-martialed. So the first thing that has to happen is to hold those accountable for failing to defend the nation's Capitol while the Congress was in session. Why am I worried? It would have been so easy for a terrorist organization to infiltrate this movement. The lone wolf terrorist, I think we've got a pretty good grip on. But political protest in this country is the heart and soul of who we are. But we haven't been protesting lately. We've been burning down cities. We've been attacking federal courthouses. We've been looting in the name of social justice. And now we've occupied the Capitol. This needs to stop. To my Democratic colleagues, I share your disgust and embarrassment and determination to make sure that what happened in our capital never happens again. But you need to speak up when this happens in other places. Lawlessness, lawlessness in one place breeds lawlessness everywhere. When one cause resorts to vi uh, violence and people are not prosecuted, other causes believe maybe this is okay. So the mistake we made is when people tried to destroy the courthouse in Portland, they weren't prosecuted to the full extent of law. When they occupied Seattle, they weren't prosecuted to the full extent of the law. When they attacked the, the acceptance of the nomination by President Trump here in D.C., virtually no one was prosecuted. It's good to hear everybody wanting prosecutions. Some are late to the dance. I was there from day one. So let's reset and move forward until every political movement out there, no matter how just your cause in your own mind, using violence will not advance your cause. It will only lead to your personal incarceration or if you go too far to injury. So what am I calling for? I'm calling for a joint task force to be assembled and spend all the time and money necessary to identify every person who breached the security of the Capitol, who occupied the chambers, who invaded offices and destroyed property. There's a ton of video evidence out there. 
I was uh, interviewed this morning by two FBI agents. They came to my house wanting to know if I had any surveillance cameras outside my house. I did not, but I'm encouraged they're on the case. Trust me, in the social media world that exists today, it will be not, won't be that hard to find thousands of people who took the law in their own hands. The people sitting in the chairs need to be sitting in a jail cell. The people who attacked the Capitol Hill police need to be charged with attacking a police officer. Sedition may be a charge for some of these people. So I will, for the next six years, God willing, every week ask of the Department of Justice, starting with this Department of Justice and the next Department of Justice, what kind of progress are you making in holding those accountable, the domestic terrorists who took over the House and the Senate chambers and laid waste to Capitol Hill? What do you need that you don't have? If you need more prosecutors, money will not be an object. If you need more investigators, we'll provide you the resources. This is a moment for the nation to show will and determination to be a nation of laws that anarchy shall not reign, the Constitution controls, not the mob. Yesterday, I was proud of Senator McConnell, the Republican leader of the Senate, who stood up and called for a peaceful transfer of power to Vice President Biden and Kamala Harris. Like Senator McConnell, I supported President Trump. I've become close to the president personally. I think his president has been consequential from a conservative point of view. It has been an amazing four years in terms of judges securing the border, a vaccine in record time, deregulating the economy, cutting taxes, historic Mideast peace agreements, the destruction of the caliphate, on and on and on was tarnished by yesterday. When it comes to accountability, the president needs to understand that his actions were the problem, not the solution. That the rally yesterday was unseemly, it got out of hand, and a good friend of mine, Rudy Giuliani, did not help. I said on the floor of the Senate, I cast my vote accordingly, that Joe Biden is the legitimate president-elect of the United States. Are there irregularities in this election? Yes, I'm sure they are. Have they been overblown? Absolutely. There's been a constant effort by people from the president's legal team to provide misinformation, to distort the facts, to make accusations that cannot be proven. That needs to stop. As to the 25th Amendment being invoked, I do not believe that's appropriate at this point. I'm looking for a peaceful transfer of power I'm looking for the next 14 days to reset, and will we hand off power in a traditional sense by it being a peaceful transfer? I talked to Mark Meadows this morning. The transition is going well. It is fully in place. I talked to the president's legal counsel, Pat Cipollone. He is doing everything he can to help the transfer occur. As to, to these two gentlemen, most Americans will never know the service that Mark Meadows and Pat Cipollone and their, those under their charge provided to this country over the last year. I talked to Secretary Mnuchin today, who is in Israel. No one will fully understand what he and others have brought to the table. So to those who believe you should leave your post now to make a statement, I would urge you not. To Robert O'Brien, you've been getting a good counsel to the president. You've been a steady hand. I've been missing your phone calls. Robert, stay on. To those in the national security apparatus, we need you now more than ever. So I embrace Joe Manchin's statement. I talked to Joe this morning. He has called for those around the president to stay in place to ensure that we can have a peaceful, efficient transfer of power. Why do I say that Joe Biden is the legitimate president of the United States? Because he got the most votes, the state certified him the winner, enough to get over 300 electoral votes, and all you need is 270. To my colleagues who objected yesterday, you didn't do anything illegal. 
the law allows you to do what you did. I respect your ability to do it. I disagreed with what you were trying to do. One member uh, of my conference said, we can't turn a blind eye to the problems in this election. I will tell the American people, there has not been a blind eye turned. The allegations about the law being broken in Wisconsin, that they changed election law contrary to the Wisconsin Constitution because of COVID, was litigated by the Wisconsin Supreme Court they ruled four to three that what happened was legal. Al Gore accepted a 5-4 decision by the U.S. Supreme Court to end his litigation to be President of the United States. My job is not to overturn the Wisconsin Supreme Court. The allegations about the consent decree in Georgia changing Georgia law unconstitutionally were litigated in federal court and the Trump team lost. The people on the campaign legal team have made accusations without sufficient proof. They have been more the problem than the solution. They have claimed that 66,000 people in Georgia voted under 18. I have not found one person. They have claimed that 8,000 felons voted from prison in Arizona. I've asked for a list of names and received none. This needs to end. A blind eye was not turned. The outcome that was reached was disappointing to those of us who supported the president, but it was done through the lawful process of challenging courts, uh, court challenges, and actually having hearings with the legislative bodies of these swing states. Not one judge anywhere in the land accepted the accusations to be legitimate, and not one legislative body and the states in question uh, decided to change the certification after hearing the accusations. The Congress job is not to overturn elections that we disagree with. The Congress's job is to count the votes sent in by the states that were lawfully certified and declare the one with the most votes the winner, president and vice president. As to Mike Pence, in this debacle of the last week or so, there's one person to me that stands out above all others, and that is Vice President Mike Pence. The things said about him, the things he, were, he was asked to do in the name of loyalty were over the top, unconstitutional, illegal, and would have been wrong for the country. Mike Pence faithfully fulfill the duty assigned to any vice president to count the votes and declare the winner. To those who would wish that the vice president of the United States could send electoral votes back to the states because they believe fraud was involved, be careful what you wish for. Do you really believe it's good in America for a single person to have that power? Do you think the 12th Amendment gives that power? Absolutely not. So what's so disappointing to me is that people who have prided themselves on being constitutional conservatives were pushing this bizarre theory. So I just want every Republican to know that in my view, limited government applies when you don't like the outcome just as much as when limited government applies and you do like the outcome. The Constitution needs to be followed as written, even though you wish you could do something the Constitution does not allow to get your way. That's the very essence of activism. To those who were pushing the idea that my, uh, Vice President Pence had the power to unilaterally set aside certified electoral votes from a single state or send them back, you have cheapened the idea of constitutional conservatism. So when asked to do something against conservative values that would be harmful to the nation, Mike Pence said no. Other people chose this moment 
to advance their personal causes. I have found in this job over time, moments like this come back to haunt you if you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. So January the 20th, I intend to be there. I am hoping that President Trump will allow his team to continue to work closely with the Biden uh, transition team to transfer power peacefully. That President Trump will focus on some of the achievements he has accomplished, remind the country of the consequential presidency he has had, accept that he fell short and a new president will be coming, and to turn down the rhetoric and allow us as a nation to heal and move forward. To my Democratic colleagues, I ask the same of you. That I'll take questions. Senator Graham, you were one of President Trump's biggest critics during the in 2016 election, and you became one of his biggest supporters. Do you have any regrets in your support of him and what this has led to at this moment? Uh, no. Uh, I was a opponent of President Trump, and I got beat like a drum. I didn't scratch. I had a decision to make. I said everything I could think about regarding him as a candidate, the people of South Carolina spoke. He won my state and became president of the United States. So I decided then it's not about me. It's about my job as being a senator from South Carolina. People from South Carolina wanted me to work with this president, and I did. I did the same with Obama. I'll do the same with Biden. But this is a Republican president. He changed my opinion of who he was through his actions. The reference yesterday, though, in helped incite a mob yeah, riot. Just let me get there. The reason I've been close to the president is I think he's done tremendous things for this country. I think the judges he has nominated have been outstanding choices, and we saw yesterday an independent judiciary. I think. People like Bill Barr were, were the best people in the country to be attorney general at the time they were. I think what he did to destroy the caliphate was long overdue. It makes it safer. I think getting out of the Iran uh, nuclear agreement has led the way to peace between the Arabs and the Israelis at a level I would have never imagined. I think he's brought order to the border. He listened to me. He asked my advice about judges. When I got upset about Syria, he listened, and he actually changed his policies. I could never get Obama to do that. Obama had a good relationship with him, but with Senator McCain, we begged him, do not leave Iraq, but he did. As to yesterday, it breaks my heart that my friend, a president of a consequence, would allow yesterday to happen, and it will be a major part of his presidency. It was a self-inflicted wound. It was going too far. And here's the one thing I can say. The next two weeks can begin to right the ship depending on how the president behaves. And over time, his presidency will be viewed in a fuller context. I have absolutely no regrets of helping this president make us safer, more prosperous, I've enjoyed my relationship with him. I say these things not because of animosity. I say these things because I have to. But Senator Graham, after being so close to this president for four years, do you think that you and other Republicans had more of a responsibility to speak out, both privately and publicly, when he said things that were untrue, when he ginned up his base? Do you think that that would have made a difference yesterday? I think uh, the Trump presidency has been poorly covered by people in your business. I think that from the time he took office, there's been an effort to cover his presidency in a way that I think is not helpful to the country. I have spoken up. There has been an effort to believe everything that Trump did was wrong before it's proven or not. All I can say is that I have shared my thoughts with the president. I've spoken out when I thought I should, 
But the one thing that I want you to know, there are plenty of Republicans believe that the Trump presidency was never legitimate in the eyes of the Democratic Party, never accepted by the people in your business, and it's been a constant drumbeat. And uh, I think that's taken a toll on all of us. So could I have done better? Yes. The question, could you have done better? Could those of you who cover the White House done better? You need to ask yourself that. Senator Graham, do you mind if I just follow up on that really quickly? You didn't acknowledge Joe Biden as president of this United States for a month and a half. Didn't that contribute to the notion among I, Trump I, I supporters think that, that is, this was stolen I think from that is exactly the problem. Did anybody doubt that uh, uh, Vice President Gore, did you ask any Democrat, why don't you acknowledge that Vice President Gore lost? You waited till the results were in of the litigation. No, it's not. No, it's, it's a president going to court, challenging results. From the time the race was called, I was hounded. Why don't you say Biden won? You wanted me to declare Biden the winner before President Trump had the right to go to court and exercise the same rights other presidents have had, and I chose not to do that. I said last night. Joe Biden is the president. He won. The Constitution worked. Senator Graham, um, you just said that Vice President Pence was asked to do things that were illegal and yes. unconstitutional. Yes. He was asked to do those things by the president publicly. So why couldn't the 25th Amendment be used if the president asked the vice president to do things that were illegal and unconstitutional? Yeah, yeah I think what the president was uh, asking of the vice president was not constitutionally allowed. He had people who said that he could do it. The fault lies, I think, with some of the legal advice around him. You've had people in his legal team make claims that are just beyond the pale. The president's frustrated. He thought he was cheated. Nobody's ever going to convince him that he wasn't. But this idea of asking the vice president to use his powers to send back electors that were certified doesn't exist in the Constitution. He's the president. Like, yeah. it shouldn't the buck stop somewhere yeah, else? The president went for this with the litigation. I'm sure it would not be appropriate to invoke that right now. Do you trust the president not to incite the kind of violence that he promoted yesterday and the next two weeks? I'm hoping he won't. I'm hoping that he will um, allow Mark Meadows to continue with the transition, that he will start talking more about what he's done as president, focus on the threats we have coming from Iran, uh, finish out the next 14 days in a way that will allow us to get a good start for Vice President Biden, that it does him no good, in my view now, to continue to attack the legitimacy of the election, because this election was legitimate and it has now been decided constitutionally. So my hope is that we can move forward in the next 14 days, but this will depend on what the President does. I am hopeful that the worst is behind us and we can transfer power on January 20th. That hope. Have you spoken to him? I talked with, uh, I talked with um, some people this morning um, that seems to be a belief that we're moving in the right direction, and I'm just trying to reinforce that. The people around him, I think, have the right attitude. The people around him, I think, are giving him good advice. It's up to the president to take it. And again, uh, you asked me about my relationship with the president. I regret it not one bit. I think he's, we've had a hell of a ride. We've done some great things for the country. I hate it it ends this way. Senator, do you believe that uh, the events of yesterday at his camp have disqualified the president from seeking the office again in the future? I'm not worried about uh, the next election. I'm worried about getting through the next 14 days. Um, we'll talk about 2022 and 2024. Let's get uh, Vice President Biden sworn in January the 20th, and I'll make an observation politically. Uh, if you're a Republican, it's been a tough couple of weeks. We lost Georgia. Two good candidates fell short. I'm confident that from what I hear, the Democrats are going to overreach. If we can regroup, rebuild ourselves, get away from the fiery rhetoric and the conspiracy theories, that we'll have a chance in 2022 to take back the Senate and take back the House, but it's going to require us to go back to the blocking and tackling of conservative politics. Senator, can you respond to the Democrats' 
that they're, they're not only talking about the 25th Amendment, both Leader Schumer and Speaker Pelosi have used the word, talk about impeachment, yeah. pursuing impeachment. Can you just respond to what the yeah, I mean, response I, would be from I, Republicans I, if they did that? I, I don't remember either one of them speaking up a whole lot uh, during other crises. I mean, I like them both, but when they were burning Portland down in Seattle, they never said a word. When they were attacking Rand Paul, they never said a word. The guy that sort of stood out to me was Joe Biden. I thought Joe Biden did a really good job yesterday of talking about how bad this is and we need to get it behind us. And I'm telling you as a Republican, I don't support an effort to invoke the 25th Amendment now. If something else happens, all options would be on the table. But I, I see, I hear from Sh uh, Schumer and Pelosi, just political talk. Senator, what, what kind of um, role do you think that President Trump should take in the next 13 days? Should he be more public? He's been banned from some social, well, suspended from some social media platforms. And what kind of role would you like to see Vice President Pence play? Well, I'd like to see President Trump help unify the country. Uh, I don't know if he's going to come to the inauguration. It's up to him. I wish he would. I wish you would come and, and acknowledge uh, that the transfer of powers has occurred, but that'll be up to President Trump. He shouldn't come unless he feels like it's the right thing to do for the country. Things like that would go a long way. I think he should talk about what he's done. I think he should focus on some policy achievements and, and, and basically let the Biden administration know that I have secured the border. Here's how I've secured it. If you change these policies, we're going to go back to chaos. I think he should talk about how we've gotten all these peace agreements between the Arabs and the Israelis. That's by being tough on Iran. I think he should explain to the American people the successes of his policies, and that not only will be helpful to Vice President Biden, soon to be President Biden, but he will have a responsibility if he changes those policies. If I were the president, I would highlight what I've been able to do at the border and explain to the Biden administration this worked. How did we get these peace agreements between these Arab nations and Israel? How can you do more? Why, why do you think he can't do that? Do you believe, after spending so much time with him, that he is mentally unwell, as some of his aides have said? No, I think he's very frustrated. He thinks the election was stolen. I think he's uh, got some very bad advisors around him that push ideas that are not sound. I think the president... Um, has got good people around him now. I think Mark Meadows and Pat Cipollone and others are giving him good counsel and good advice. Uh, I am here today to answer your questions, to say what I think. I think the best thing the president can do is encourage a transition to be peaceful, to be professional, and to use the voice he has in the next 14 days to talk about his successes and to bring us together. He's, he has a voice, and I would like him to use that voice to bring us together and to focus on his accomplishments. And uh, we're going to soon have a new president. I promise to work with Vice President Biden to the extent I can. There's things we can do, and there are things we're not going to be able to do. He hasn't done that the last four years. What makes you think he can do it in the last 14 days and bring people together? Well, I think he has, uh, in the last four years, accomplished major things. Now, in terms of a personal style, he's been divisive. Uh, all I can say is that many of us on the conservative side believe that the coverage of President Trump has been over the top. I was here during the, the Obama years. Um, good example. Uh, the Mueller investigation you covered breathlessly turned out not to be the event that it was billed to be. And when we looked at the abuse at Department of Justice and the FBI, you found it in the obituary page um, that Fox, no, y'all covered it for the most part. Uh, that's a double standard. I think the, the problems that Hunter Biden have, if a Trump had done those things, would be front page news everywhere. So there's a lot of people on my side of the aisle who believe that the president, uh, the way he's been covered has contributed to a lot of discourse. And uh, y'all have lost the mainstream media, Senator, conservative you America, and you got to ask why. What concerns do you have with the way that Capitol Hill police uh, handled the protest last night, and should their $460 um, million budget be reviewed? Okay, 
uh, one, thank the frontline officers. How could we not be prepared? How could in a joint session of Congress with the Vice President in the building, you not do better than this? Where were the National Guard? The Black Lives Matter protest, have you seen the images on the Capitol steps where we had National Guard members in riot gear? Why weren't you as prepared at this time around? Where was the Pentagon? There's all kind of stories that they were refusing to activate the D.C. National Guard. I don't believe that to be true, but what kind of intelligence gathering apparatus does the Capitol Hill Police Department and the agencies in charge of defending the Capitol have? How could they fail so miserably? We're 20 years after 9-11, right? Yesterday, they could have blown the building up. They could have killed us all. They could have destroyed the government. People coming through the windows had backpacks as big as my desk on the Senate. They should have been challenged. Warning shots should have been fired and lethal force should have been used once they pe penetrated the seat of government. Those backpacks could have had bombs, chemical agents, weapons. We dodged a major bullet yesterday. If this is not a wake-up call, I do not know what is. Is it a money problem? If it is, we'll fix it. Is it a leadership problem? Obviously. Is it an intel failure of the highest proportions? Absolutely. So I will end where I began. There are so many storylines for the last 48 hours, many of them political. This one has brought us together. Bernie Sanders was as upset with what happened as I was. I was talking with Bernie about how could they come in and take over the Senate. And he said, get them out of there. To his credit, Bernie wanted a forceful response to the domestic terrorist who occupied the House and the Senate. So let's end on this note. Yesterday, the capital of the United States was taken over by domestic terrorists that are not patriots. They overwhelmed the Capitol Police. They destroyed the House. They took over the place and sat in the presiding officer's chair. They went through my desk, and all of us had to go to a single room to be protected. This shall never happen again. We've lost our will and our determination to stand up for law and order. And when you let a courthouse be attacked and nobody gets prosecuted, the next thing you know, it gets worse. To all the mayors out there who have discord and unlawful behavior in your city, get on top of it. I'm not a mayor. I'm a United States senator. I accept responsibility for fixing this problem. How do you fix this problem? You adequately resource those in charge of defense you hold those accountable, and if they fail, you fire them, and you prosecute, prosecute the lawbreaker. All of these images of people sitting in these chairs, in Pelosi's speaker's chair, I mean office chair, we know who that person is. They should go from sitting in the speaker's chair to a jail cell.